Verses 12, that's the base scripture that we're going to be coming from today. Mm, God is just so good. He's just gracious. Just all the things that he's allowed us, I know for myself, just for allowing, allowing me to just be able to see it. And, and the things that he's shown me just this week, I'm just grateful. Amen. Y'all can keep playing. Y'all don't have to stop. I'm not going to be before you long because the kids already preached a sermon already. So basically, all I got to do is touch a few points and I'm going to sit down and get out of the way. Amen. I mean, they were all up in it. And I, to be honest with you, they had no, there was nobody but God because Sherry has not seen this. I didn't even show it to them for that main purpose. They were all up in it. All right. <laughs> That's awesome. First of all, though, I want to thank God for being able to be before you one more time. Amen. Uh, getting a little more, a little more comfortable with hearing him now. You know, I appreciate Pastor E for allowing me to do a training. Amen. But we'll just, I like I said, I just want to thank them for allowing us to stand before you, allowing me to stand before you one more time. I want to thank Pastor Shaw and his family for surprising me this morning, even though I talked to him this morning, and he said nothing about coming this morning. So let's give them a round of applause for being here. Thank them for coming. I want to thank, um, actually want to acknowledge my daughter, Kiera, for her um, pageant that she was in last night. We came up a little short. But you know what the amazing thing was, you know what I'm saying? She she gave her all. Amen. And you know what I'm saying? The, the one uh, point that my wife brought out to her last night was, you know, that there was a young lady in in the in the uh, pageant, and you know what I'm saying? Her parents had fell on hard times, and they couldn't um, they couldn't afford uh, a gown for her. And when Kira found out, Kira came home and she said, "Mom and Dad, she said she said so and so and so don't have a, a dress, you know." Can we, can we help? Can we help? And you know what? That's better than anything. Mm -hmm. When you have a giving heart, a giving spirit like that, you know what I'm God has no other choice but to sow back into you, but to, you know what I'm saying, to continue to bring back to you, you know what I'm saying, that that you release. So, you know what I'm saying, even though, you know what I'm saying, you didn't get the crown, but the real crown, you know what I'm saying, is already yours. You know what I'm saying? God has already, you know what I'm saying, stamped that A on your report card. You know what I'm saying? Because you passed the, the big test. Amen? Yeah. So, you know what I'm saying? Let's give her a round of applause. Uh, you know for her just being bold. And just the growth uh, that I see in her, you know, uh, from her, you know, being in those pageants and, you know what I'm saying, her outgoingness and, you know what I'm saying, her being strong. And, you know what I'm saying, she's just going to be a great woman of God one day. Amen. Amen. And we love her for that. Amen. Amen. And as you already know, it's not always going to be the perfect thing. So, you know what I'm saying? We're going to go through some bumps, okay? Amen. It's a little bump in the road. <laughs> That's right. Always win. Am I finished thanking everybody? Oh, y'all, Jazz is on TV. Y'all need to check her out. I seen the commercial. She is on TV. And, you know, seen her twice this morning. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Let's go ahead. Um, like I said, we're going to come from Ephesians 3, uh, verses 1 and 12. I mean, verses Ephesians 3 and 12. And uh, Ephesians 3 and 12 uh, basically states, let me find it. Let me get to it first. Okay, you're right. The face says, In whom we have boldness and access with confidence by faith in him. I'm going to say that again. In whom we have boldness and access with confidence by faith in him. As y'all know, you know what I'm saying, over the past few weeks, we've been talking about faith. And, you know, I'm thinking, I'm like, God, why do you keep bringing up this faith thing? You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm, I, you know what I'm, saying? I'm, I'm believing, you know what I'm saying, that, you know, God has got something great in store for us ministry-wise and, and for us in our personal lives um, regarding our faith. 
I believe something is coming. Mm -hmm. Somebody said the greater, did we not, the greater is coming about three weeks ago, right? The greater is coming, but you know what I'm saying? If we don't believe that the greater is coming, you know what I'm saying? Or, or, or if, you know what I'm saying? We can't get it in our spirit that, you know what I'm saying? That, that we have to have our faith, you know what I'm saying? Or that we have to have crazy faith. Amen. Then, you know what I'm saying? Man. We're holding up that greater that's, you know what I'm saying, coming our way. Yeah. So once again today, you know, I'm, I'm coming here. My, the topic that I've chosen says, my confidence is not arrogance. Mm, it's faith. It. My Amen. confidence is not arrogance. It's just faith. So when you walk in, in your classroom, ladies, and, and, and you know what I'm saying, and y'all feeling real good about yourself, and then you hear your little friend say, oh, she thinks she all that. You don't gonna write you all that. You don't gonna write you all that. You know what I'm saying? Because of who? The greater in me, the greater that's in you, the greatness that's in you, the God that's in you, that's why you all there. Not because of, you know what I'm saying, how you got your hair tweaked or, you know what I'm saying, how you got your makeup fixed. No. It's the greatness that, that lives on the inside of you. Amen? Amen? So we're saying my confidence is not arrogance, it's just faith. So don't let nobody knock you down. Don't let nobody tear you down. Amen. So many times we'll, we'll let we'll let people say little things and, 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 and we'll shy away from a thing or we'll shy away from a situation simply because she talking about me or he said something about me. Mm -hmm. The Bible says that greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Amen. You operating under, under God's grace. You're operating under his mercy. And he says in his word that you can do anything with him. So if you have him with you, don't let nobody tear you down. Your faith, your faith, and your confidence. Amen? Amen. Amen. But, you know what I'm saying, the, the subject, you know what I'm saying, that I want to basically go will come from that subject matter. But, you know, to break this down, you know, um, as I was thinking about this, as, as, you know what I'm saying, as I was setting out studying, um, God began to, to, to bring some things, you know, we, we go through, we, as far as the kids going to school and, you know what I'm saying, we're learning different things and we can learn different aspects about life. And to think about, you know, some of the, the great figures, you know what I'm saying, that we've had in our life, like people like Jesse Jackson and Martin Luther King and uh, who are some of the other people, uh, Muhammad Ali and, you know, different people from, from that aspect. And I began to wonder, Really, what was it? What was it? What was it on the on the? What was it in them that was pushing them to keep going forward? Mm -hmm. What was it in them? You know, what I'm saying that was that was pushing them to, to to keep pressing, even though you know, what I'm saying the situation, you know, what I'm saying that, that that they saw themselves in was greater than you know, what I'm saying the, that was greater than them than that those, the person themselves. Or greater than the situation or, or the resources that it had to to to, to press against the situation, oh, yeah. and so I begin to you know what I'm saying just really focus on Martin Luther King. So let's let's, let's focus on Martin Luther King. You know what I'm saying because you know what I'm saying, as we know a little background history on him is that you know he was a young black man when he started out. Um, he was a radical for Christ. Amen. He loved the Lord. Amen. But he realized that, you know what I'm saying, that there were some things about the way that we were living that, you know what I'm saying, that just weren't right. You know what I'm saying? Some some equality issues that we were having. You know, if y'all don't remember reading in your books, you know what I'm saying, we used to have to go to the back of the store to, to get served. You know what I'm saying? There was a, a different um, water fountain that, you know what I'm saying, that we had to drink out of, which really I didn't have a problem with that myself, you know what I'm saying? Or that we had to sit in the back of the bus, you know. Mm -hmm. But, you know what I'm saying, the thing was, what was it about him? What was on the inside? I remember, you know what I'm saying, listening to the documentaries and, and different things. And, you know, Martin Luther King would always say, they were like, well, how are we going to do this? And Martin Luther King would always be like, God is going to do it for us. God is going to provide for us. He's going to do it. He's going to, and, and you know what I'm saying, over and over again, it was always God was going to do it. How are you guys going to march across there? They're not going to let you cross that bridge in Alabama. God is going to do it for us. Amen. 
Even though he may have went one time and, you know what I'm saying, they, had melt, they may have failed the first time, but you know what he would do? He would strap his shoes back on and he would get up and he would go and do it again. Go ahead. Amen. And every time he was standing out there, they were coming in to put the microphones in his face and he would be like, God is going to do it for us. So I'm here to tell y'all today that your confidence is not arrogance. It's your faith. This is what you believe in. <clears throat> Amen? Amen. It's what you believe in. And we already know that we're, we're believing in the one and true living God. Yes. But let's take an antagonistic look at this. What if Dr. King had decided that in the middle of, of, of all you know what I'm saying? The miracles and all the things that, that have been done that they've seen that he was going to decide to flip the script on us and say, man, look at what I did. If it weren't for me, y'all Negroes wouldn't, wouldn't be where y'all are today. <laughs> what if he had done that? Where would we be? What would you have done? But thank God, you know what I'm saying, that, that he, was the, he was the man that he was. To the point where, you know what? He stayed steadfast. Even in the midst, he took on all of the issues and all the concerns of, of all the black people in America or all the, you know what I'm saying, non-black people in America. Because really that's what this fight was all about, but it was just us in the forefront. Amen. And he placed all those issues at the foot of at, at the feet of God. And he allowed God to do what he needed to do. Amen. Amen. But the thing is. And, and, if, and the thing about this, if, if, if the devil wanted any of us, or if wanted anybody out of that, uh, out of the civil rights movement to fall, it would have been him. Even though, yeah, there, was, there were a lot of people, you know what I'm saying, that helped the civil rights movement, but he was the face. He was the one that, you know what I'm saying, that the, the devil wanted to, to disbar. He wanted to, you know what I'm saying, to mark his name. He wanted to scar him up. You know what I'm saying? He wanted to do whatever he could do to him, and which he did try. There were some things, you know what I'm saying, that came out. We're going to not even discuss it right now because we don't have the time. But there were some things that came out, you know what I'm saying, that, you know, that, that Martin Luther King, you know what I'm saying, really, you know what I'm saying, it, when it came out, he really should have went and ran and hid. If he wasn't, you know what I'm saying, a, real, a really a true believer. Amen? But, like you said, my faith, my confidence is not faith. His faith is not confidence. It's my confidence, man, good Lord, I missed it. My faith, <laughs> my confidence is not arrogance. It's faith. Amen. Amen. But let's go into this thing. Once again, Ephesians 3 and 12, it says, In whom we have, we have boldness and access with confidence by faith of him. And so I begin to think about this thing a little more. That my arrogance. What about my arrogance? In, you know, in, in the dictionary words, it says arrogance is having or displaying a sense of overbearing, self-worth, or self-importance, or being conceited. I'm gonna help you out with the difference between arrogance and conceit. I mean, and, and confidence. And arrogance says having or displaying a sense of overbearing, self-worth, or self-importance, or just plain out conceit. But then Psalms, 47, Psalms 75, verse 4 through 5 says, I said unto the boastful, do not be boastful, and not, not the wicked. Do not lift up thine horn. Do not, do not lift up your horn on high. Do not speak with a stiff neck. And basically what this tells me is, you know what? If I'm being arrogant or I'm in a situation, you know what I'm saying, where I'm just being straight up conceited, you know what? Arrogance will cause you to walk off your job. Just because you feel like, you know what? I'm too important. This, you know what I'm saying? I mean, the job been there for a hundred years, you know what I'm saying? You only been there seven, you know what I'm saying? But you come to a point, you know what I'm saying, that you know what? They need me. This job been here too long for them to be needing you. They were there before you and they're gonna be long, be there long after you. Arrogance will also cause you to hurt somebody spiritually in the ministry. Because you know what? You walking around because you got to be puffed up. Because I got to be the one, you know what I'm saying, that's always, you know what I'm saying, on top or feeling like, you know what I'm saying, I'm in control. 
Bible says we're all equal in the kingdom of God. Amen. From the person cleaning the bathroom, from the person, you know what I'm saying, in the pulpit. We're all equal. Go ahead. We're all, we all have an equal share in this thing. Yes. So why do you know saying that you have to make yourself feel like you're bigger than me? Go ahead. Yeah, God has blessed you already, but you know what? My blessing is on the way. Go so ahead. you should be cheering me on. Not, you know what I'm saying, not trying to knock me down. Go ahead. Also, you know what I'm saying, arrogance will cause you from having a healthy relationship, you know what I'm saying, with a husband or a wife or maybe with God. Amen. <clears throat> because it, arrogance will, will, will cause you, you know what I'm saying, to knowing that even though you do have that six-figure job and you're walking around, um, you know, and, and you're doing really well, but then arrogance will cause you not to, to speak to that man that God sent you, even though he's not, you know what I'm saying, where you are, mm -hmm. but he's somebody that's going to treat you like a queen. He's somebody that's going to love you. You know, my wife told, said something uh, one time. She was talking to some people, and, and she let me in on a conversation. And you know, and it's so true. She said, "We so sometimes we we walk around so busy looking for our Halle Bears and you know, and, and, and our next top models and stuff that we miss out on our Oprah, somebody who's gonna sustain you." Y'all don't understand. Me. So don't keep walking around looking for you know what I'm saying. The pretty Joe Blow. You need to be looking at the nerd sitting off in the corner doing his homework. The one with the with the pocket protector. Because you know what I'm saying, he's gonna be the next one that he's gonna be the one that's gonna, you know what I'm saying, gonna invent the, invent the next great big thing. He's gonna be the one that's gonna stand behind you, you know what I'm saying, in, in that situation, you know, when you're hurting. He's the one that's gonna be there to hold your hand. He's the one that's gonna be there, you know what I'm saying, in those rough times. Amen. <clears throat> But let's talk about confidence. It says confidence is to fully trust, believe in, believe in the power, or trustworthiness. To fully trust, believe in the power, trustworthiness. To fully trust, believe in the power, trustworthiness. So when you're being confident, you full, you're fully trusting God. You believe in his power. Mm. Y'all ain't get that with you. That you're fully trusting God and you're believing in his power. That's the full circle. Amen? That's crazy faith. Amen. The same thing that, we, 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 that you all talked about this morning, the same thing that we discussed, you know what I'm saying? You're believing in his power. Man, if you got accident, then, you know what I'm saying, in, in, in the main scripture it says, and who we have boldness and access with confidence by the faith of him. Amen. Amen. So if you have confidence, you know what I'm saying, you're bold and you have access. Go with it. You're bold and you have access. So where's your confidence? Yeah. Where's your confidence when it's time to walk up in that job interview? Where's your confidence when it's time for you to go and sit down and take that test? Go ahead. Because God says, you know what I'm saying, where there's confidence, you know what I'm saying, now I see your boldness, you know what I'm saying, okay, here I am, I'm showing up for you. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen. So with this being said, God wants us to be steadfast. He wants us to be unmovable. Go with it. He wants us to be just like Dr. King and some of the other great people that have come, you know what I'm saying, before us, saying that God is going to do it. Mm -hmm. God is going to do it, just like Moses, just like Abraham. They were always saying, God is going to do it. He's going to do it. Why did they say that? Because they believed it. Mm -hmm. They believed that he was going to do it. Mm -hmm. He's shown up for us so many times. Yeah, he's, he hasn't performed the type of miracles for, for some of us, you know what I'm saying, that, that, you know what I'm saying, that they've shown in the Bible. But you know what? I don't see nobody in here looking like they're lacking <laughs> in the eating area. <laughs> I don't see nobody, you know what I'm saying, walking around in here barefoot. Everybody drove up in a nice vehicle this morning. I'm sure there's somebody got some, they, who got some money in the pocket? Come on. Yeah, Raise your hand, Terrence. You, know, you sit over there and try to tell that tale. <laughs> you flooded over there. Some of the things that we take for granted every day are blessings. Amen. 
Yeah, you take it for granted now because you want, most of y'all have your children. You taking that stuff for granted now. When you get out and get in college, you tell yourself, Rudas and Yours is going to be your best friend. And we are. Uh, <laughs> I don't know about you. With cheese on But that's right for a dollar. Go a long way. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> and the first time you mess up your money, you're going to be, trust me, you're going you're gonna to really realize who, who God is really is Amen. because he's going to show up for you. I already know he is. He did it for me too many times because I should always mess up my money. 